Hi, and welcome to this video from the Lean Search 2020 Ordinary Level. And this is paper one and question five. So as always, to get a copy of these notes, just email me at shanetry at gmail.com. And if you want to see other playlists, just click subscribe. Okay. So question five here, now it starts off um, and it's a five-parter. So this must have been, I suppose, downgraded in terms of marks. But it says solve the equation. Well, it has a quadratic x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So <clears throat> I suppose there's two ways of doing this. One way that will always work is using the quadratic formula. Or we sometimes call that the minus b formula. Okay, now I shouldn't say x is equal to whatever. And that's given to you in the maths tables. Or I could use the faster way if it works, okay, where you open up two brackets. Now there are different versions of this. And I'm looking for a number that will multiply to give minus 4 but add to give minus three. Now, I don't think there is one. Minus, no. Minus four by one, minus four plus one. That can't be that easy. Minus four times one equals minus four. And then will that same two numbers add to give minus three? They do, okay. Should look to this question in advance. So the two numbers are um, minus four or minus three. Now let's check. I have the answer on the next page. Okay. No, minus four, wrong. Minus four plus one. Okay. So I don't know where I got the minus three from. Well, actually, I do know where I got it from. And let's just fix that problem. Apologies. Okay. I'm just so surprised it worked. Okay. So plus one. Now, one way to check did it work is to multiply both those by each other. So if I go with the fast thing, you just go x by x is x squared. x by 1 is 1x. Then minus 4 by x is minus 4x. And minus 4 by 1 is minus 4. Now they'll combine. So you get x squared minus 3x minus 4. Is that what we started with? It is. So those two factors worked. But again, I could use the minus b formula. Okay. And look, in past iterations of teaching depending on the class group i often give them a choice and i say look you can learn or relearn the fast way or you can always use the quadratic formula now with the quadratic formula you have to know what this a value is the b value and the c value now they're the numbers in front of the x squared is the a now the whole number so it's minus three in front of the x is the b value and the c value is the number at the end so minus four. And then I substitute those numbers in instead of the letters and then resolve it out. Okay, now this one would solve out pretty handily because you're going to get an answer of x is equal to minus four or uh, plus one. Actually, it might be x equal to plus four or minus one. Yeah, you're probably getting that form, but the factors are, okay. So, in fact, I may have had to go one step further here. Where I got to this point, I found the factors, but then to solve it, I should take each of these algebraic expressions and I can put them equal to zero and then solve them out and you get x equal to four or x equal to minus one. Now the quadratic formula would have, would have got you those answers directly. I suppose I just forgot to do the last little step there. I wonder would you have been penalized? I'd have to look at the marking scheme to see what they wanted to do. It's normally paper two I mark of the leaving cert. Now the question uh, five part B, now again it's only five marks, so it leaves 15 marks for part B, part two, I guess. Um, again, I should have looked ahead. This says complete the table below to show the value of the function uh, f of x is equal to minus x squared minus x plus six. So a different quadratic. Now I know it's quadratic because the power of two is the biggest power and they're all x, okay, they're all one variable. It's function notation. Now I prefer to write function notation where the x is smaller it's just hard to type that, okay, present it digitally. But I think it's much more obvious that this is not f times x. This x is just a subscript as such. Okay? In a sense, it's just giving you information. Now, there's four, one, two, three, there's seven different inputs uh, given. And they're given to you these in a fairly direct form. All you have to do is put in the input and see if you get the answer. Now, I can test it here. If I put minus 2 in, like they're telling me, I should get 4 as an answer. 
So if I put it in, so it's minus, now, if I'm putting the number in, I should put it in in brackets, especially if that number is negative. A whole pile of stuff is gonna happen here. Uh, I'll do the minus times after, but the power should take precedence. That's minus two squared, means minus two times minus two, which is plus four. Now there's no power here, so I can, multiply, I can multiply the minus. Minus by minus is a plus, and then the six doesn't get changed because I'm not doing anything. Now, if I go left to right again and just remove brackets, minus by plus is minus. Okay, I'm not changing the two and I'm not changing the six. Okay, bad writing. Then just add those numbers. Minus four plus two is minus two. Minus two plus six is plus four, which again is what they said it would be. Now I can come along and just do all the other calculations. So if I put minus four in, okay, it's the same thing as minus times minus four to be squared, minus times minus four plus six. It's literally the same as this, except the input has changed. Now from a calculator perspective, okay, let me bring up my calculator. I can program that in. Okay, so clear off the last thing. So it's uh, minus times, now I know it's negative four, but I, I can change the negative four. That's gonna be squared. That's minus times, now it's negative four we, this time, and then plus six. So once I programmed it right, and again, putting things in a bracket is really important, that minus four generates an output, and the output for, for minus four is um, no, it's minus six. If I then come along, and all I've got to do now is go backwards, okay, delete that, now it's minus three is going in next, Everywhere I see the minus four, replace that with minus three. Press equal, I got zero. I can do that for every single input and I'll generate all the correct outputs. As long as this is correct, there's no problem. If you made a mistake, um, if it's a consistent error, like you make the same mistake for all of them, if they can see a sample calculation, they can make, or we can make a judgment on what you did wrong. If we see no sample calculation, okay, and all I see is wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer, etc. You know what? Zero. I'm assuming you just guessed. Now, if you guessed correctly, okay, you're going to get the marks. But what's the chances of that? Okay. So that's B part one. Now, B part two says, okay, um, go ahead and graph that. Okay. So we're given there the, the domain or the inputs we just had on the last page. We're basically drawing what we have from the, the information from the previous page. Okay, so I'm going to flick on because I've taken that screen grab there. Now I realize this is a bit messy. The f of x is this color here. Now I apologize, some color blind, so I didn't pick a color I recognize. I forget, I forget what I used. But that's part two. All you do is, is plot the points you had for the previous uh, part one. And let's say you couldn't do part one, or let's say you just guessed. Okay, part one would get penalized for the, the incorrect information. But what you graph in part two, even if it is wrong technically, if it's graphed consistent with part one, you'll get full marks. Okay. And there is 10 marks going for that, so it's a fair chunk of marks. Now part three here okay, is worth five marks. And it says on the same, in fact, I'll just go back. It says on the same diagram as the function f, draw the graph of the function g of x is equal to f times x minus 2. So if we want to find g of x, okay, we just need to use our f function and insert this okay, instead of the x. So our function was, um, now if I recall it, minus x, uh, sorry, minus x squared minus x plus 6. And let me double check that uh, it was. Okay. So instead of the x, we've been told to put in x plus 2. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to put in x, sorry, put in x minus 2. Okay, um, no, sorry, there should be a minus. Nice and concordant. Let's try to cross it over. Um, and then that's squared minus times x minus 2 plus the 6. So what's going to happen here is that this, I can't multiply the minus in until I expand the x minus 2 squared. So just to point out the x minus 2 squared means x minus 2 by x minus 2. Now, if you're multiplying a two-term bracket by a two-term bracket, you've got to make sure that everything in 
each bracket multiplies. So x by x is x squared, x by minus two is minus two x. But you also have to make sure that the minus two multiplies by both things. So minus two by x is minus two x, minus two by minus two is plus four. Now that can combine together, which gives me x squared minus four x plus four. So all I've done is, okay, expand this thing here. And if I copy the answer in, that's all I've done. Everything else stays the same. Now if I go left triangle, look, I need to remove these bigger brackets by multiplying the minus in. So minus by plus is minus. Minus by minus is plus. All you're doing is changing the sign the whole way across. Minus by plus is minus. Minus by plus is minus. Minus by minus is plus. And the, the plus six doesn't change because it's not being multiplied by anything. I know it's kind of a bit messy. There's no other x squared, so it's minus x squared. 4x, take away x is 3x. Minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4. Okay, minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4, yeah. Okay, so that's my g of x. Okay, so I found that by putting x plus 2 into the f function we were given in part 1. Now, they're asking me then on to draw that. Now, they tell you, use these inputs from minus 2 up as far as 4. So you can just turn them in now. I have it done on the next page. Okay, I've shown the calculation I've done there. But I haven't, I suppose, shown the, where I got these, these differences. Okay, So if I put in the minus 2, now g of minus 2 is equal to minus times minus 2 squared plus 3 times minus 2 plus 4. Okay, now I've gone, I've gone messy. You just put it to the calculator multiple times and you're going to end up with this equivalent shape. Okay, um, it's, it's off by 2, for lack of a better word. If you notice there, the number at the end here, the plus 4, shows you the y-intercept. Okay, and that's just a small thing, but it's, just, it's useful. And that's your your g function. Okay, so they're they're very alike, and I think that should be the question. Okay, yeah. So look, that's the end of question um, five of the 2020 ordinary level paper one. Uh, Leaving for math question. If you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at chaintrygmail.com and subscribe to see other playlists. Okay, so thanks very much.